Welcome, everybody, to the Living Consciously television <laughs> show coming to you live from our Denver, Colorado studios, also streaming live on Google Hangouts, on YouTube Live, as well as at ConsciousEvolutionMedia.com. I'm your host and moderator, Chris Steve Toth, and our theme this evening is how a three-dimensional approach to healing, or what is a three-dimensional approach to healing, the spirit, the body, and the mind is all about. And our guest guest, I'm happy to introduce our guest guest this evening. Her name is Martes Chambri uh, Disky. Uh, she joined us from that beautiful country up above the north of the USA called Canada. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Steve. It's good to have you here. <laughs> it's good to have you. Very <laughs> really good to have you. And uh, let me introduce you to the rest of the cast. It happens to be on. Uh, uh, on the left of Martez, uh, our own Linda Dyer, and she's coming from a place where the kangaroos are roaming 24-7, and that would be Australia. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Linda. Dave. I haven't seen any down my street recently, but you're perfectly correct. <laughs> they do roam it's wild. Very, it's very unique. And then to, to the right of uh, Martez, we have Nina Di Rosa. And she's coming uh, to us from a place where the lights never go out, and we learned many, many, many shows ago that she doesn't go out either. Welcome to the show, Nina. Well, my lights don't go out, but I do go out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I meant, that even when you speak, your lights are on. That's exactly what I meant. Absolutely. Always on. Always on. Good and to be here, Steve. Great to have you. And uh, last but least but not last, we have Rosie Kuhn, who's coming to us from a place where Jimi Hendrix was born. <laughs> and that would be the state of Washington. That's all I need to know. Welcome to the show, Rosie. Thank you. It's good to be here. Do you like Jimi Hendrix? He was a great guy. Yeah, great yeah, music. Awesome, awesome yeah. music, huh? Yeah. All right. So we have this fantastic theme, which is uh, what is a three-dimensional approach to healing the spirit, the body, and the mind, and boy, that's a fantastic theme for all of us and all of our viewers because we, as humanity, have a lot of healing to do. So, um, Martez, uh, we would like to hear a little bit about what do you mean by a three-dimensional approach? Uh, I think we know what spirit, body, and the mind is, but uh, uh, enlighten us a little bit about this three-dimensional approach so we can start a beautiful dialogue. Um, what I mean by a three-dimensional approach is integrating all three aspects of spirit, body, and mind, rather than going to different practitioners and dealing with them separately. Um, this came to me uh, in 1987 after being in a car accident, um, where most of the right side of my body was broken. And I would go to different practitioners. Um, but it felt very disjointed and very, um, what would, would happen too is I go to practitioners and different things would happen with different practitioners but they weren't um, necessarily qualified or prepared. You know, I had emotional releases when I was having physical therapy and vice versa. And what I like, to, what I do is, is an approach where we look at it all, in, all collectively, holistically because we are spirit first, um, but we tend to focus on mind and body with healing and leave the spirit out. And that's my approach is, is, is healing the spirit and the others fall in place. And a lot of times too, the um, body and mind need healing, but it's collectively to bring it back to the spirit because the spirit needs healing. How do you do that, Martez? How do you focus on the healing? I the do. Healing of the spirit? My, my background is registered massage therapy and cranial sacral therapy. Um, but my approach is integrative where I do, it's almost like like a body psychotherapy. Um, and we are looking at all aspects, even um, our thoughts, are, are the way we speak, the belief systems that we have uh, um, learned sometimes or we have adopted. Um, and whether that stuff is, is those belief systems that are still serving us, or whether they're continuing to um, encode patterns that, that create repetitive behavior, and then we have reactions as opposed to responses. So 
so with what I do is looking at all aspects because all are, all all have a chain reaction effect. Our words affect our actions, and our actions affect our affect the whole. But it affects you completely. People, yeah. Yes, it affects uh, you. Know, somebody says something that affects you completely, whether the, the tone of voice and how they say it, it can put you in a good mood, a bad mood, and different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And also, even the approach with healthcare practitioners, a lot of times when you go in, they treat you as your condition. They don't treat you as the person who is experiencing the condition. And there's like a disconnection that happens. Um, and we become very clinical in our approach rather than. You know, looking at people from their spirit and coming from a, a point that these people are are going through, experiencing experiences that we need compassion and empathy, um, and and touch their 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 spirits, which helps their minds and their bodies collectively. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the doctors and I and think the other way the around, people, wouldn't it be? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But I think a lot of the doctors and a lot of the people, you know, we all go by the book, it looks like. You know, we have an injury and it's this, this, and this, and this, and this. And what you're bringing into is to actually delve into your body and also to, to, to try to get out from yourself to the doctor of what exactly it is. Because sometimes we, as, as human beings, don't do that. And we just say, yes, we've got a pain here, we've got a pain there, and this hurts and that hurts. Rather than sort of describing the whole thing of how it happened, when it happened, and how you are feeling mentally. So it's all kind of by the book, which is like very disappointing because every one of us are different. And alternatively, too, what happened with me when I was uh, 23 when this began, um, I put my faith in the health care practitioners and didn't listen to myself and yeah. my inner uh, wisdom. And thought, okay, they know what they're talking about. They have, um, you know, the degrees and, and diplomas and that. And what ended up happening was numerous things uh, were misdiagnosed or wasn't uh, were missed completely and found out later. And that taught me to start listening to my inner voice, which was tapped into my inner wisdom. So what I tend to do is try to help people to learn how to tap into that again, to reconnect that to that deeper um, knowing through their inner voice. Also, to learn to trust their instincts and trust, because a lot of times um, we have beliefs that our, you know, our body is not is, is behaving in a manner that we're fighting it. Rather than we, whatever we fight, um, we're just going to create resistance. Rather than starting to create more love and listening to our body and work, you know, in partnership with it in, in a loving, gentle manner. Yeah, nobody knows their own body than themselves. We yeah. we know what's going on. And why are we so frightened or we're so afraid to say exactly what it is? Or we have to kind of, and I always feel this, that we have to kind of make up a story that's worse than what it really is because we want to get better faster. If we tell the doctor this or the, whoever we're seeing, this is the problem, but it's not really the problem because we've got to do it. I think, um, uh, Nina, if I can just interject here, I think that not everybody understands what's really going on with their body. I You're think right. when you go, like I lectured with a, a doctor right around Australia, <clears throat> and um, one of the things he said to the audience, and I wasn't prepared for this, he said, in the five years that I spent becoming a doctor, I had one hour of nutrition. So for you to come to me and ask for nutritional advice or spiritual advice, I don't have a learning of that. And okay. that's why together we made an amazing team because I did. And so together, I mean, sadly, he was killed by a car and our wellness center that was going to develop um, with this it didn't eventuate. However, I, I, I think in a way it already has and I've just dedicated my last book to him. But it's about, for, for me, like Martez was saying, it was not only learning that the mind and body should be related together. We don't, we, we, we don't want mind over matter. We absolutely don't want that because that's how I got lupus. Mm -hmm. The mind over matter is where the 4% of consciousness is always selling the 96%, uh, which is a universal energy inside of us. It's overriding it, overriding it, overriding it. So consequently, and that doesn't repair your body. There is no cells being repaired when the 4% of consciousness is at work. So we want to have the body, if there's a cramp or something, we want that to make a note to the mind and let the audience out there 
listen to your body. So if you've got a cramp or something, that is a calcium or magnesium deficiency. It's a, it's a sign from the universe that there is something wrong. And it may be that your thoughts, your stressful thoughts, are creating it. Um, however, you can complement by taking some magnesium and, and calcium and you can have a think about how was I thinking to get that result. Can I change the way I was thinking and change my stress levels? And then once I'm cued in, I think one of the best lessons I ever learned was about listening to my gut. Mm -hmm. And well, that's the greatest. That is the greatest. I, I, I just, yeah. <clears throat> well, do, do, do you feel that it's reasonable for us to expect doctors uh, to be able to uh, treat our our spirit, our body, and and our minds all all at one place? Um, I mean, I've I've experienced some doctors in my own life, and. Uh, you know, most of them, from my experience, are, are, are primarily tuned into body and mind, not necessarily spirit. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, think that, I think that doctors of, of, of before, we'll say, who, um, who the, their bedside manner, um, my dad was a physician in Detroit. He, would, he was a doctor that went to people's homes to visit them and see them in their own homes as best as he could. And I think that and he was known for his bedside manner, and that that quality of presence I think is much more healing than the technicians that um, that mm -hmm. most doctors have have turned into uh, mm -hmm. they've lost their ability to connect to us as human beings and focus more on um, the bodily functions and uh, the ana and anatomical corrections of things so it's I think that that it's very possible for doctors to to be in, be present to uh, to us, but it's just not as it doesn't occur as often as it used to. No, and also I feel that if you've got the doctor actually coming to you rather than you going to the doctor, it puts you in a different frame of mind of thinking, well, he's actually come to me, so that makes you feel energetic, it makes you feel good, it makes you feel great, and then he has this bedside manner, which is absolutely amazing, so you haven't even been diagnosed with whatever it may be or whatever he finds out, but it's but you've got yourself and your frame of mind into such a great place of he's come to me and he's now going to help me, so you automatically feel better anyway. Yes. The quality of care is quite often what creates the healing, not necessarily the, the pills Absolutely. or the medicines, but the quality of care mm -hmm. that, that makes a difference. Yeah, because well, you're mm -hmm. automatically inside, you feel, you feel good. Yeah, I, and I don't think oh. that we're relying on the doctor to... So to, to be the end and the end all, for me, it's what if we had a team of people? What if the doctor mm -hmm. was brave enough to be able to say, okay, let's have a look at what's going on for you. I have a group of people or I have a couple of people that could really work well with you to assist in your healing and they would include like Martez or Ninon or Rosie or myself and so that now we've got, like for me, the two hands of medicine working together is an absolute dream. When I had a doctor working with me, that was my dream mm -hmm. to be able to allow that to happen for people so that we can look at the patient holistically. So, Steve, I don't think we need the doctor to, who's normally AD, audio, digital, and needs to know everything factual. And a lot of doctors who are very kinesthetic are in jail because they got too kinesthetic. Um, <laughs> well said. But to, but to, well, I actually worked in the prison, so I know they're in there. However, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the pudding is in the eating. <laughs> However, to, to have a, a, a group of people cohesively working together well, where we sit and work with a patient. You know, I think that is the key to the future. Yeah. Or well, even I, so that we have we have cross training. So even yeah. if we may, may not specialize in, in the moment as things are occurring, we can be present for the person rather than to, you know, not be able to address it. There's numerous times where um, in my training as a massage therapist, I you know I was told you work on the physical, you don't get into the emotional at all. However, with touch being so powerful, I I would have most of my clientele having an emotional release 
um, while having a, having massage therapy. And, and, and I quickly started taking courses in cognitive therapy and so forth because I recognized I couldn't not be present um, and address what was arising for that person in that moment. Because to me, that was a bigger disservice to that person and their spirit for not being able to be present um, and 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 know what to you know how to how to address their needs in this moment. So for me, the, the three dimensional is having a, you know awareness. And even a lot of times, I would say to people, they would come in with the physical. Um, there's the emotional component to it as well as the spiritual. And a lot of times, I'll say, when this occurred, what was happening with you emotionally? Most doctors will just come in, if you go to a doctor, they'll just look at the physical, they won't, they won't um, investigate what else is going on in your life that may have been contributed to this, and that it was on a body level that it you broke down, or it might have been on a, on a uh, mental health level that you broke down, or, you know, or a spiritual level that you broke down. So, so, so I, I just want to suggest something, um, just again, from my own experience recently with my youngest son. Um, you know, I took him to have his brain balanced, and the results, he's done a 10-session a ten program, and the results are absolutely outstanding. And I can guarantee you that if I, if I would have taken him to a regular doctor, he would be on some kind of pills. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you. And, well, and, we would, and we wouldn't have the results that we have 10 sessions later and $2,000 la later. But I'm absolutely amazed. And so the reason I'm bringing up this example is because I feel that we have a responsibility to ourselves to search this out and educate ourselves. And if we don't have a doctor that's thinking about spirit, body, and mind, and thinking about this theme concept, which all of you are talking about, which I love, but if that's not happening, we still have a responsibility ourselves Mm. to search this yeah. out for ourselves and for our families, don't you think? Mm. Well, yeah, I think that the, the point of, your sh of the show is this con consciousness evolution. And I think that um, Western medicine has its place, um, uh, but the continuum mm. to where we're going now, which is energetic medicine and quantum, like physics medicine and the energy vibrational resonance of, of our being medicine, it's, there's a whole continuum, and, and acupuncture is part of that, uh, healing hands is part of that, cranial sacral, all, there's so many aspects of it. But the consciousness, I think the audience, that the, the listeners and viewers, they're, they're curious enough to keep watching and observing and witnessing and perhaps questioning, um, how do I shift from that uh, more uh, allopathic orientation and the fear-basedness of, of, of our Western medicine. Like, if there's something wrong, I must be sick and I might die, as opposed to I have symptoms, which indicates I need to shift how I'm being in the world. I need to work on a spiritual level, on a, my emotional elements, my relationships, my something that's out of whack. And it's not because I'm sick and need medicine, but I... I am in the verge of uh, transitioning or transcending to a healing process. My symptoms is an indication of a healing process that needs support. And I think that that's what we need to get across to people, that, um, that we don't need to be afraid about having symptoms. We don't have to be afraid of, of listening to our bodies for, for what it's telling us. We need support, some, something beyond what we're getting right now. And yeah, for us to empower no, ourselves and courage to do that. Yeah, I agree. And I think most people are sort of relying on the medicine because there's more medicine and drugs sold today than at any time in history. And I think and you'll see a majority of older people that may, they don't understand because they're for older, so they don't understand that they, they can take control of their body and they can start thinking different, but they rely on, I'll go to the doctor and he'll do it for me. And this is where we're back where the beginning again, which is what I said, was that they're relying on somebody else rather than finding out, I mean, you know, what's wrong with yourself. I mean, if I get cramps, I usually know what to do, take some magnesium. I know that. But not many people know that. I think you start finding out what, what these older people especially are relying on other people. So how do we get to help the older generation? I know by this program we can help them, but how can we really help them with through the doctors? Because the doctors don't have time to start analyzing 
sensing an inner person. So, well, I, I, I think that like with Martel's here, here, there's so many, uh, there's so much even on the internet where there's uh, so much education and so much available yeah. that just being curious and googling whatever it is that you're curious about brings up so much information and so much support even mm -hmm. though it may be at a distance you know through internet there's so much support for an, uh, for that uh, willingness to think differently to empower ourselves to think differently in support of our wellness and ask better questions, Rosie, so that yes. if you have got something going on, so if my left hip's aching, which is the hips are usually around the inability to move forward, so if my left hip is aching, what have I been thinking to allow, because every emotion in um, is linked to somewhere in our body, so mm -hmm. from the heart down all through the gut area is the fear area. Now those people with autoimmune diseases that's the area that mostly gets hit so your your irritable bowel your you know your bloated tummy and all that that's all you know what was i what was i eating to get that result or what was i thinking to get that result so if i can empower myself rather than be disempowered and have somebody else look after me if i can empower me just to ask myself a question what was I doing to get that result? Because, oh, you know, okay. So if I can change my thinking and do take a different action, then I can prove that I can get a different result. Yeah. And I think, I don't care how old you are, no, you know, with anyway. that sort of simple training, we can learn to do that. But and it's all like around the neck. Yeah, it's like cholesterol. Everybody has this cholesterol problem. Well, why do we have it? Because of what we're eating. So why don't we find out what we're eating and try to, you know, go to eat something else? Or, because I think everybody has a different reaction to the same food. We can all have to, we, mm. some people can not get any cholesterol through eating this, and some people can get a lot of it. So I think it depends on, on your own body. But you have to look at, you know, okay, I'm going to take a pill. Why would you take a pill when you could start changing your food habits, your eating habits? So, because so, everyone yes. wants a quick fix. So I, I, I'm curious. I'm curious about something. So the reason I'm curious is I'm just bringing up my son's example again. So what really happened in this ten sessions with him is his brain got rewired. Mm -hmm. Now, before his brain got rewired, he had no chance at all. You know why? Because he was an automatic pilot, completely an automatic pilot. No. The disease that he has had him. He had he had no chance. Zero. How did you find this out, Steve? How did you find out that your son had a problem? And I mean, you you were watching him, and obviously you you could see different things happening, and you kept thinking, well, well maybe we can cure I mean, this. I, exper and I experienced him. Uh, you know, ever since he he was a teenager, he had this problem. What and, was the problem he had? Well, the problem is that he has OCD. Okay. And and it has it has, you know it 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 was at first uh, really really bad, and then it got better and then it got bad again and it's to, it, it got to the point now where my heart went out to him because I noticed that he had basically <laughs> there's nothing he could do about it on his own absolutely nothing and. And who were also paying for this? Not only he was in pain, but his kids and you know his wife was in pain because he affected everybody's life around him, including me. Um, and he didn't know what to do. There's nothing he could do because, like I explained to you, when we go out to a restaurant, for example, here's one thing, very simple thing. No one in the family has ever been to his house. You know why? We never invited them. That's right, because he can't handle it. He That's can't right. handle having people come over, touch his furniture, <laughs> you know, uh, whatever. He he can't handle people going to his bathroom, uh, use, you know, use use anything in the bathroom. He just can't handle it. He he so would go absolutely crazy. 
So, Steve, you were actually doing what we are doing, which is living consciously. So you became conscious of your son, and you became conscious of it so deeply that you decided that you better do something about it. Absolutely. Not only that, this is what's interesting. That's, that's right on, Ninon. But here's the interesting part. My son, he's the youngest of three kids, and he always resisted me, okay? And he knows what I do. He knows I do these shows, but he won't listen to them. <laughs> he won't watch them. He won't listen to them because he rebe he's a rebellious young kid just like I was. And I understood that, and I let that go. But, you know, uh, he told me over and over and over that he refuses to take pills. He's not going to go to the doctor because he knows they were going to subscribe pills and he's not going to do pills. And That's so I came, I, I came to him and I said, guess what? We, we, had, this, we had this company and this uh, scientist on our network at least six times. And he talked about uh, the brain and he talked about how imbalanced the brain is and how when people balance their brain, everything changes. Mm -hmm. And I explained that to him, and he said, well, that sounds interesting. And I also knew that he, if I left it up to him to pay for it, he won't pay for it. So I got together with his mother, you know, we're divorced, and his new husband, and I said, how about if the three of us get together and pay for his, pay for his 10 sessions? Because I know, down in my heart, I know that this is going to make a huge difference for him. And so I went to him and I said, guess what? I, I'm taking away all the excuses. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're paying for it. Go do it and just be open to it and, and see what happens. And what was absolutely amazing that the end of the 10 session, when it was all over, you know mm -hmm. what he told me? I, I was like crying. He says, oh, Dad, true. I now understand you and what, what you was. meant what you meant where you can connect to something much bigger than yourself I have had that experience through this process I now understand that that's more important than anything else it's more important than my car and he was talking about his spirituality and he's yeah. he's, he's being connected he feels that he is not connected to something and he can manage this disease. He's so, actually he, so what is the difference? You, have you been over to his house? Is he inviting people over now? Is he feeling more comfortable? It, it, it hasn't gotten there yet, but yeah. <laughs> I, have, I, have spoken, I have spoken to his kids, and his kids, I, I asked the kids, so the, his oldest kid is 12, and the young one is 7, and I said, can you, can you guys tell me what's different about your dad? And, and they said, yes. And I said, what is it? He, and they said, well, when he comes home for work, he doesn't yell at us anymore. Wow. That's, 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 that's like huge. Yeah. And, and I said, I, because he was taking it out on the kids and on his wife, you know. Um, and, and, and then I went out to dinner with him, uh, actually after the last session, and I noticed that he didn't go to wash his hands before he, he got his food. He didn't send the kids. Normally, that would be like I, I, I know what he does in restaurants. The kids have of to course. go wash their hands. He has to go wash his hands. And then he has to clean <laughs> at the table. And he has to clean mm -hmm. everything. Like, like when, you know, we like to go to a specific restaurant where you can actually pay the bill uh, with this little uh, unit that's a, that has an LCD and you can actually bring up your bill and pay for it there and uh, run your credit card through it. And he, before he touches that, he has to clean it. He didn't do well, any of that after 10 sessions. That's great. None of it. That's really great. Well, the rebalancing of the nervous system is, is pivotal with, the, with the, this three-dimensional healing because the, the two operational modes of the, of the nervous system um, is your, called the cranial sacral system. It operates all of our systems for resting, digesting, reproduction, repair. Mm -hmm. The other, the other division is our sympathetic nervous system, which operates our body for stressful situations, for fight, flight, or freeze. What tends to happen is we get stuck in our sympathetic nervous system. So it's like being on high gear in your car all the time. 
And in that state, you're always perceiving everything as potentially threatening and life-threatening to you. So you're living in a fear-based um, perception. We are not supposed to live there long term, but with our lifestyles the way it is, most of us are living in that in that state. We are supposed to be living in our cranial sacral, also known as the parasympathetic nervous system, which is for resting, digesting, reproduction, repair. When we're in that state of that fight or flight all the time, then the energy of our body is going primarily there and not to the organs of resting, digesting, reproduction, repair which incidentally are the majority of health disorders that people suffer from because we're highly stressed. When we're highly stressed, our body cannot heal itself because the healing happens in the other division. So in the situation with your son, see, in that state, everything is, is done over and over again because underlying it is a perception that, you know, if I don't do this, something, something um, ill is going to happen. So it's a matter of calming the system down. The system will then recalibrate, just like a car. We're not meant to drive in high gear all the time. It's too harsh on the system. It burns too many. So it's like pressing gas. the gas. All you're, the in time. gas you're, you're in gas all the time. Sometimes I have my drive, but that's okay. Yeah. Or it's, it's always like being on high alert or having your surveillance system on in your, in your house all the time. It's on, rather there, than being and 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 it wears your system down. And that's really also. And That's you can't kind of relaxing, feel. relaxing more, yeah. relaxing and, and yes, yeah. because in a situation of emergency, the brain doesn't differentiate a small stress to a life-threatening stress. It doesn't have the time or the luxury to figure that out. It has to respond because your life could potentially be on the line, right? So what happens is the energy going to the systems of resting, digesting, reproduction, repair. That energy gets turned down. And then it gets rerouted to this other system because that requires power. So mm -hmm. what happens is the energy is not going to these systems. It's like having a crimp garden hose. The water is going through but not fully. So then if you're in that stress mode for too long, then energy is not getting to the other systems. They tend, whatever is the weakest link within that person, tends to break down. Because that's, once we get that stress system down, then the energy goes back, and that's where healing happens. The body knows what it needs to do, but it has to be in the right mode. And in the case of Steve's son, and, and most people who are under high stress, they're in that stress response. They're not in their healing response, so the body can't take much longer to heal. And it's interesting, Martez, in in terms of people who have a um, who aren't aren't able to get pregnant. You know, the reproduction exactly. people who aren't able to sleep. People who have the irritable bowel and other yeah. um, digestive problems is we don't think of it in terms of our lifestyle. We think of it in terms of there's something wrong yeah. with me. There's something wrong with my system. And we don't look at it in terms of, well, how am I responding? How am I being? To what degree do I give myself rest yeah. and uh, time to uh, rejuvenate? And, and very few of us really give ourselves that time yeah. to do that. And, and when we are in that stress mode, we tend to react to things. When we are in the, um, the restorative mode, we tend, tend to respond to things. And I tell people, we take care of our cell phones more so than we take care of ourselves. Because at night, <laughs> we'll plug in our cell phones, we'll leave it alone, right? And we'll, we'll let it be it. Part of the homework what I give to my clients is to, when you're plugging in your cell phone, allow time for you to recharge, whether, whether it's through meditations, doing affirmations, or just laying there and allowing your body to go into stillness. Because when it goes into stillness, that's when the nervous system can come out of that stress response and recalibrate itself back into the restorative responses. But we're always in high gear all the time, and we're using a lot of gas or through our stress hormones. A life force. Our life force. Cortisol, norepinephrine, noradrenaline, all these things that wear us out and leave us wired and tired. We need to care, plug in to ourselves and into our inner, 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 um, internet, what I call our internet, and into intranet. our inner, la <laughs> no, no, <laughs> our intranet, and to our inner landscape and come into that place of stillness, what I also call sacred space. And that's where our body can recharge and recalibrate 
and reestablish back into the proper part of our nervous system and out of the stress response. What would be a good so thing? Say, to, what would be a good I'll interrupt you? What would be a good thing for our audience out there? There's a lot of people out there that have sleepless nights. I hear it all the time. I didn't sleep well last night. I woke up. I da 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 da. They do all these things, and I'm like looking at them because I happen to be a good sleeper. Because I like to, I kind of put myself in a mode before I go to sleep. I get myself kind of out of a lot of right. stuff and get in where I need to be, which is sleep. But I don't, I don't, I only need like six to seven hours sleep anyway, so which is good. But how do we tell our audience that have this big problem? And I've heard over and over again, what would you like to sort of explain to them what they should try to do um, before they sort of, you know, go to sleep, whatever time it is? Absolutely. Well, first thing, what I like to tell people is make sure that your hands have a palm upward. Because oh, when the palms are oh. upward, it starts to put your body into an open position. The okay. second thing I suggest to people is to breathe in through their nose slowly for the count of four or five seconds. or And then breathe out through the nose. Okay? What that does is it makes you focus on your body and it kind of helps you drop out of your head and into the, the, the mind chatter or the, the whirlwind of thought and it helps you to get centered back into your body. And then um, if, if you want to really connect with your body, I also suggest putting your left hand over your heart and your right hand over your navel, your belly button and doing that breathing through your nose. Because breathing through your nose, you have to concentrate on your body. So it drops you from your head into your body. And then it starts to slow things down. And that's when your nervous system can start to shift gears down and get more into relaxation mode. The other thing, too, is to make uh, sure that what's happening in your jaw, that your teeth aren't clenching. When you clench on your teeth, you are mm -hmm. activating one-third of the muscles of your body, as wow. well as that fight wow. or flight response that triggers your stress response. So by even just lifting your chin slightly, it disengages this t uh, temporal mandibular joint just ever so slightly. And if you also smile, you'll start <laughs> to feel all your facial and neck muscles start to release. Just that simple yeah. thing will create a huge physiological uh, release and response. So we're going from a reaction to a response. We're shifting gears, essentially, is what we're happen what's happening. And you're sh and this sh shifting mind over matter, because you're shifting your mind. You're not exactly. concentrating on breathing in and out of your nose, so you're concentrating, you're dismissing everything else around, because you're trying to concentrate on breathing. And then a reaction with the two hands is another thing, you're concentrating where they are. So yeah, you're taking your mind off. You're taking this well, mind off a whole bunch of nonsense. Yeah. Interesting. We're going beneath, we're going below the mind. Below the surface. The body. Because we tend to be in our head and not in our bodies. So we switch, we're going from the bottom you're switching up. Switching gears. You're switching yes, the mental capacity, thinking of something else rather than thinking of that. I love this jaw thing you said that when people yes. grind their teeth. Because there's a we're lot of people it. that do that. We change it through our body, through our physiology, and then even our thoughts starts to change. So we've been too much in our heads and not enough in our bodies. So it's, allowed, it's, it's teaching people how to be in their bodies and feel safe in our bodies and that actually switches us from our stress response, our fight or flight response, to our relaxation and restorative responses where we can relax and our body can heal itself. Well, I know what I'm going to put on my Facebook. <laughs> I'm going to put all these points on my Facebook and help all my friends out there. Good luck. I, have, I have a next door neighbor that she doesn't, just doesn't sleep. And I'm yeah. like thinking you can't, and then I have another one, I have two girlfriends that don't sleep, and I'm thinking, why, wow, I and sleep, he, and I'm, you know. Or even like a nice hot bath with, with, with magnesium, Epsom salts, before Epsom. bed, and then doing this is, is, is wonderful. Because heat also helps to increase the circulation, right, it helps to relax the muscles, and, and that helps to start to um, relax the nervous system. And also this open position, switching your body from being into like a contracted, ready to go position, ready to fight position, to the opposite, which Just is to drop the shoulders. Position. Yeah, drop open, the shoulders. Opening, yeah. opening up the palms of your hands, smiling. Yeah. There's a lot to be said physiologically about lifting your head up and smiling because it changes your physiology and it also changes your thought pattern. 
Wow. I think that oh, no. it, that's very interesting, Martez, especially when you look at the the, uh, the jaw and the, you mentioned mm -hmm. putting your hand on your stomach because um, I learnt years ago that we hold most of our stress in our jaw and our stomach. Yeah. And so when we do a meditation and especially before we go to bed, it is a brilliant exercise to just drop your jaw, drop it. Mm -hmm. just, ah. And you have no idea how heavy it is until you do that. And you think, oh my gosh. Um, a lady wanted to stay with me after her husband left the ha family and wanted to have a divorce. And she said, can I come and stay with you? And would you mind if my son turns up? I said, sure, no, no biggie. Well, she said, by the way, he uh, clenches his teeth. And I said, well, can't be too bad. <laughs> 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 He woke me up from the oh. noise uh, um, that he has in his uh, in the grinding, and that is actually a magnesium calcium deficiency. If you give kids uh, magnesium and calcium, you can stop that because stress is a calcium magnesium deficiency. So, as as you were saying, Martez, I mean, I love my. Uh, magnesium crystal bars or even putting two teaspoons, two tablespoons in a little bucket of water and sitting in front of the TV with your feet in the bucket for 20 minutes and then it just absorbs right through the body. There's so much research that was done in South Africa and a lot of places where to enhance sleep they want you to bathe um, and or put your feet in magnesium before you go to sleep. But I just wanted to share that around the jaw and the stomach because that's where we hold our stress. So mm -hmm. if we can release those two areas like Martez was saying, um, then you'll find, um, I mean like you Ninon, I have no trouble sleeping. <laughs> no, I don't, and I don't know why because I, I hate to brag about it, especially when I have people who can't sleep and I say, oh I had a great night's sleep and then I thought maybe I shouldn't have said that. But I did and I'm not going to, you know, I feel happy about it because I don't have don't have those stress problems but I do keep myself out of those stress problems because if something, if you really can't do something about something, what's the point of stressing about it? What's the point of worrying about it? There's nothing you can do about it. A lot of people just worry, worry, worry. And I look, why? I, I don't get it. Well, a lot uh, of times it's not that they, they do that. It's because their nervous systems are on. Um, and it's not they're on in that autopilot of being in that stress mode and driving. Yeah, they're not in control. They're, they're they, have, they wired, they're not, they wired no. it that way. It's, and, yeah, and the um, body becomes accustomed to that, right? No. And then all those hormones, they get used to that hormonal influx all the time. So it's a process of gradually slowing the body down so the body can recalibrate, and then it gets used to being in a uh, slower mode, and then through that slower mode, they start to feel more empowered. And especially when you start to explain to a person how our nervous system works, then they realize, oh, I've just, I've just uh, my nervous system's gone into high gear. Okay, I can breathe. I can disengage my jaw. These are little things I can do to help to shift, the, shift that process, shift that that uh, speed uh, lower it down, and then when they start to calm down, then they start to get empowered. Each time they do that, a new nerve pathway is being rewired in their brain. So each time they do it, that brain pathway gets used, it, go, it becomes more automatic until it becomes a new re reaction, a new response, as opposed to the reenacting of the old way of doing things. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's funny because a woman, I was talking to a woman who does, which I'm going to ask in a second, um, and she said to me, she said, Nina, it doesn't matter. And and, I, she said, and we were sort of going through the day, and she said, Nina, it doesn't matter. And I'm looking at her, I'm thinking, well, I never thought it did matter, but when I was listening to her, it doesn't matter. But what she does, she does a lot of the tapping, you know, the tapping hair and the tapping hair and the tapping hair and the tapping hair. How does that work? With the, is, is that is that a good thing? Because it kind of works, but I'm not quite into it. Well, essentially, you're shifting gears, are you not? Because whether yeah. you're tapping or whether you're breathing, you're changing the channel. You're basically you're changing, your you're changing out of the um, the fear mode. And if you think yeah. of being in that stress mode, uh, the fight or flight, it's based in fear. So the breathing helps to get you back centered in your body. When you do that, you start to feel a little bit more control, rather and more empowered, rather than feeling out of control, which can escalate into uh, panic and anxiety attacks. But when you are able to do something and create change, you are actually creating a new neuronal pathway in your brain. Yeah. So now it doesn't default into a reaction because now it has two options: a reaction or a response. The response is what we do. 
the reaction is what we default into. There's a um, there's a, a a spiritual teacher Gangaji, and um, her one of the meditations that she does has been just so profoundly um, just shifted me because basically what she says is you know when you're in meditation and you and a thought comes up or you're thinking something just say stop and um, and so uh, I would do that when I go to sleep and I would practice it when I go to sleep and so I have my mind is busy and then I would say stop and it would stop but what I found and I've heard other people say this is that 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 no thinking place which is our expanded self in, in that no thinking space it's so scary without the thought mm -hmm. that they want to go back to it and I found myself in that same dilemma when I first started uh, started this practice is because who am I without my thinking uh, we're so dependent on our thinking we're so dependent on the the mentalizations going on it's constant with our electronics and and all mm. that to be without our thinking is really really scary and I think that's part of what keeps us awake and conscious and alert is we most of us have not had an opportunity to really know what it's like to be be in that space of quiet and just say stop and explore who it is who beyond this beyond the, the thinking you know when mm -hmm. we can say stop what is it that we're we are without the thinking element and yeah. I think that that's where we can start to connect with a, a more expanded self but just saying stop uh, is a really great focus, a really great meditation. Very yes, similar. Yes, uh, we were taught to say next, which is very similar. Just next. In other yeah. words, I want to dismiss that. I don't need that in my life right now. So next. Um, and the other thing I found very helpful um, for me and also um, another lady is if you can't relax, just begin your gratitude. Mm -hmm. So start being grateful for everything in your life and you actually fall asleep being grateful because you're out of your body now. You're out of you and all your woes and you're starting to be grateful for everything you experience that day. And like you yeah. said, Martez, it puts you in that smiling place mm -hmm. of thinking, only thinking about things that were pleasant and I don't care, like the sun rises since we've, we're on daylight saving now. That's why I've been here for two hours because I got the time <laughs> fixed up. <laughs> There's something about being down under. <laughs> um, but I, I just you know, being grateful. Like I, I'm yeah. grateful for the opportunity to go to the beach every day and see the sunrise. I'm grateful for the dog that walks me there. I'm grateful for the grass and the flowers and and you can just think of all the beautiful things in your life and it mm -hmm. takes your head away from anything else. And you find you wake up the next morning because all of a sudden the gratitude, the responding of the gratitude takes you out of that reactive mode and allows you just to embrace all the great things. And you know, even some of the challenges I am grateful for because I learned so much from them. So thank you. You know, thank you for the patience I gathered while working with that person, or thank you for you know the sun or the rain thank you for the rain today because it watered all the plants rather than oh bloody awful day you know no always and I see you are mm -hmm. being grateful can send a lot of people to sleep it's allow, allowing yourself to calm and like you said say next or stop mm -hmm. and what am I grateful for I find too what happens is when it's a progression of going from the mind out of that constant uh, whirlwind of thought down into the body, but down mm -hmm. into what I call my sacred space or my space of stillness. And in that space of stillness is my where I feel my connection to the greater um, essence that's out there. And it puts me into that place where gratitude comes. When I'm in gratitude, it's that's where I'm connected to my source. Um, and that's where I, where I find that's where the true healing happens because then I reconnect and reestablish that connection with myself, which is also with my with my creator. Uh, and through that, that energy starts to flow more fully through me, rather than the 
the whirlwind of my head or the aches and pains or whatever that I'm experiencing in my body. It's like I drop down into that space and that's where the true healing happens. And that's what I call about the three dimensions. It's kind of going through those layers to that, that sacred self or the sacred authentic self of who we truly are. And from there, that's where we get our true authentic power and that we tap into the, the universal energy of the creator and that's what allows us to come out fully uh, in the world and, and give what only we can give um, to the world. But there's so actual like, proof around um, gratitude and the link mm -hmm. that gratitude has to your health. Absolutely. I just finished writing an article on it in my newsletter that went out today and it's like, how does gratitude improve your health? It keeps you in that positive, uh, projected place where you are linked totally to universal energy and you feel, like I said, responding and your body starts to heal. It loves that place. Mm -hmm. and I, so have a, I, have an I have an acronym about magic, which, I, um, which is homework that I give my clients. And magic stands for meditation, affirmation, gratitude, intentions, and connection. And my mm -hmm. homework to clients is for every day to do their magic. And to do that and then journal down what they got in their meditation. Uh, and then the affirmations or the positive statements to, to affirm that. The gratitude to write down five to ten things each day that they're grateful for. And then the intentions. And the intentions could be just as simple as, you know, I'm going to look some, everybody I see today in the eyes and I will smile at them. Or I will say hello. Or it could be, you know, uh, different things that you want to, you know, um, goals that you want to reach. And then connections because you start to see the synchronicity, the coincidence of all these things that come together um, when you start to be more conscious. Um, but again, it's, that's part of the self-care um, of, of time to recharge and reconnect with ourself, with our source. And that is where I think our true power and, um, and our healing comes from, is when we tap into being in that space to allow uh, for the healing to happen. But if we're in our heads and too much, we are tend to be in that fight or flight response. That's not where it happens. Well, what is, as a, you know, I want to congratulate you. Um, I just wanted to congratulate uh, Martez because so often um, we can have people on that want to tell you what to do. But um, most of us are walking around with some ignorance. And all we need, the opposite of ignorance, is knowledge. And what Martez, I think, has done today is clearly shown us some points of what we can do to empower ourselves to get out of our own rut and just even if we do one of those things, even if we just do the gratitude prayers at night or drop our jaw or go and have some time for us to do you know, a few of those things or listen to your gut, there are things that you can do. We all had to start somewhere. You know, yeah. and that's what you can do um, as the people listening um, to get to a place where things change for you ever so slightly. However, once they change, as Martez said, you are changing the brain waves mm -hmm. in your mind, and you can have a whole new section of habits which are just beautiful. Yeah. I wish I was. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, I just want to ask a quick, quick question about children. Um, how old are children when they start shifting from? You know this uh, this life of ignorance and having fun and laughing and playing, and they start becoming into this serious side of life. What is that like? 12, 13 years old when they start realizing what life is and the pressures. It's more like six. Eight, yeah. six. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's probably younger. Yeah, with all five. that. Their, their, yeah. Like five. Yeah. Well, and how do we how do we help that. them? How do we help them with that? What is a, a good way as a parent to help our children not to get into that and to help them to stay to maintain or to sort of you know have that peaceful mind? For me, it's it's um, playing uh, as as adults to to uh, recapture our innocence to to go to get out of our brain, get away from okay. the TV, the electronics, get away from work, get away from all the the mentalizations. And really play with our children, uh, yeah. away from away from things. That that much like you're saying, Martez, the the sea of your connection, uh, yeah. a piece is without us engaged personally in the direct uh, experience of play with our children, they're not gonna they're not going to 
you know, listen to our words, they're going to watch us do what we do in our Facebooks and our, our, uh, our actions. do the same. Our actions, and yeah. And there was a great um, Facebook thing the other day and the lady said, my husband was frantically running around um, and he couldn't find anything. And he's the, she said, my miss eight-year-old came up and said, mummy, I can help daddy. He's looking but he's not actually seeing. Let me let me just sit for a minute and let's just see where Daddy would have left the keys. And she quickly walked over and found them. <laughs> yeah, you see, that's so, children I, flying. I, I just I just wanted to add something to what. Uh, okay, I, I I'm not gonna I'm not <laughs> I'm gonna Go take ahead, the mic. Steve. Okay, ahead, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so so when when Rosie said something about Gangaji, so I was a there was a real purpose why I'm sharing this. I, I was a follower of Gangaji for eight years and what my experience of that eight years was is a couple of things. One, Gangaji has the most beautiful smile that I have ever seen. Um, and, and so that goes back to what uh, Marta said about smiling. <laughs> She's got smiling as far as I'm concerned absolutely 100% perfected. Number two, she has an energy of absolute calmness. I have never been in anybody's presence before, like Gangaji, that is so calm that I couldn't help myself to become calm because in that presence, you, you cannot have nervous energy because it just, oh my God, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. <laughs> she was so calm. She is so calm. And I always felt in her presence, I mean, I probably have done hundreds of satsangs with her. And it wasn't even about, it wasn't even about the conversations. It became more about not having conversations, period. Just be with each Perfect. other. Be, be with, it, with a hundred people and just not say a darn thing. There's yeah. nothing needs to be yeah. said. <laughs> and you're totally, and you're totally and, present with each other. Yes, and what, ha, what that has taught me, and the reason I'm sharing this with you and the viewers, is that these are just things that people can do. Uh, yeah. it, it doesn't work for everybody, but it certainly has worked for me, because she was an example to me of how to be with me, and then how to be with me in silence with a whole bunch of people. That, I mean, that was just huge for me. It's funny how so many people are afraid of being silent. They always seem to think we have to talk or we have to have action. But one of the greatest things is to be silent. And it's so funny because I drive from Los Angeles to Vegas and vice versa. And they always say, you know, don't you get bored alone? And I say, no, I love it. I got four <laughs> hours of being alone and I can put what music I want on, on no music and just relax and just do what I want to do. And it's beautiful just to be silent, just to be mm -hmm. quiet and silent. It's some, and not, a lot of people can't seem to do that. It's sort of an impossible thing. You've always got to talk. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you've always got to talk. You've always got to talk. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But we don't respect ourselves. <laughs> Yeah, I often say to people, you know, we always do for others, but we don't take care of ourselves. Um, and we really aren't good to others if we aren't in our, in our best form either. But it's time to take care of ourselves. Um, and through that, it's through stillness, and you can get that, whether it's having a hot bath with, with Epsom salts or it's magnesium, or whether it's being out in nature. What uh, Steve was talking about the book Gangaji as well is because her presence um, her energy is so um, still and solid. What it happens is your body's energy when you're in her presence harmonizes with hers. So it brings it you into a place of stillness, right? Yeah. And that's what we yeah. do in each other's presence. Our body's energy will harmonize. So if we're with people that are in a high energy state, unless we're conscious and aware and to keep our um, maintain our level at um, our energy level calm, we can tend to be uh, pulled into their their heightened state and vice versa with Gangaji her state is calm and solid so our body's let, um, stress response comes down and harmonizes with hers and, and that's, I think that's, that's sorry Martez I was like, going to say and that's a really good thing to bring to our children yeah it's just yes. when we calm down we bring that that quality of, of calmness to our children. It calms them down. And, and the presence. And yes, in the presence. There's nothing greater than our spirit feeling witnessed 
feeling seen, feeling heard, and feeling met. And that's that's key. That's the, what I believe is the true key to healing. Yes. And supporting and supporting yes. the, the yes. children's creativity. I, I, I cannot think of anything more important than supporting funny. them in their creativity. And it's funny because we always, I think nearly all over the world, we read to our children when they're babies. We sit with them at night, we put them into bed, and we read a story. Now, how perfect is that to continue that all through your life? Because they're putting these mm -hmm. children into a beautiful place, and then they go to sleep, and then we're still rushing around trying to collect ourselves. But we should do the same when you yeah. think about it. Think oh, about I want somebody reading me stories. Read yourself a story. You could read yourself. Put some music on. Read, do something that's going to relax you and sort of, you know, put you in that lovely place. Because we do it to, I think, nearly all people read to their babies, to their children, you know, to a certain age. And when you stop that age, when they start getting into trouble. Well, be, be, before we close point. out, uh, before we close out, I want to ask uh, Martez. Just one more question, because this is a lot of my friends have this problem, and I, I and I'm sure this is this is a huge problem all over the world. Uh, I have one specific friend, actually, it's it's a couple. There is a problem of snoring, <laughs> and it's, it's it's so big that many times they end up sleeping in separate rooms because uh, they just can't stand each other. Uh, they can't sleep in the same room. And I know this is a huge problem all over the world. Is there anything that you know, you know uh, my best that can share? So are you sure it's yeah? somebody else? Are you sure it's a friend? I'm sure it's not me. It's not me. I swear it's not me. Okay. You know, I, I'm telling the truth. It's not me. It's a, it's a couple. Friend uh, of mine. A friend of mine. Well, um... This is kind of an interesting question too, uh, because I've noticed this recently with um, uh, with a person who snores, but in doing some relaxation techniques, the snoring has really become um, lesser, like lesser in, in in volume. I was actually concerned that the person may have had apnea at the beginning, where um, and the more relaxation that's done earlier before bed, I found that the sleep the, the, it subsided greatly. So mm -hmm. it's been the funny that you, it's funny you ask because it's something that I've been kind of actually um, inquiring about and uh, trying to work on my own to kind of uh, see if my I have a theory, but I haven't trying to you know experiment with it to see how how it works out. So it's funny that you should say that. <laughs> 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 Let us you know what I've recognized now you know with diet as well, the, the diet, uh, by taking people off the wheat and dairy, the two most allergic foods in the world, they've had a terrific response to a lesser snoring because they don't have that mucus or that allergy uh, running around in their throat. Yeah. Yeah. So not, so what about people that drink? You know, you've got the drinkers and they're really... Mm. Wow. <laughs> Change All right. Well, guess what, folks? Our conscious hour has become uh, conscious. Came to its end, <laughs> <laughs> as it hour. does every Tuesday. Um, this was absolutely fantastic, Martez. I really enjoyed um, everything that you you said, and you you certainly have given some some incredible way, new ways uh, of looking at um, uh, the spirit, the body, and the mind. And and I, I think we all have done. Uh, terrific sharings and um, supported the, each other and the viewers in uh, maybe going more inside of ourselves and realizing that um, we we all have our intuitive powers and we we know how to assist our bodies, our mind, and, and our spirit uh, to be connected and, and heal ourselves. We, we since we have the power to make ourselves ill, we can also heal ourselves. Right. And the way we and the way we tap into that is in stillness to be able to, to hear that quiet voice that directs us. It's yeah. the stillness. Yes, beautiful. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. So thank you so much for being oh, on the network an and, and being with us. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot of fun and uh, it was an honor uh, and a privilege. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. Same. Right yeah. back same, at you. Same to you. 
And uh, for everybody else out there that's uh, watching now or going to be watching the replay, uh, make sure that you keep watching this show and all the other shows, uh, almost 2,000 of them on YouTube. Uh, keep watching them, and the more you watch them, the more they get to the top 10 list every every uh, every month, which we publish at the end of the month or the first uh, first day of the new month. And um, uh, when they get to the top 10, they have an opportunity to go to public television, uh, which is absolutely awesome. So if there's anything that we did here tonight, uh, touch, moved, and inspired you, uh, continue to come back to ConsciousOfVisionMedia.com. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great evening. And we'll see you, everybody, uh, Hi, next Tuesday. Hi, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. It's amazing. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, Steve. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.